Hello, hello. I'm Courtney Scott Wright, and I'm here with you for Spin a Quickies. Last night was a big night in acting awards. I was one of those people that was really interested to see who was actually gonna win. Normally, you get all these movies that are winning that are like depressing and sad. So last night to see everything everywhere all at once take the best ensemble category for an acting team was really exciting. It was a fun movie. It was something that everybody really enjoyed if you saw it, which I really hope you did. If you didn't, then go see it. And then also, Michelle Yeoh won Outstanding Female Performer for this year's SAG Actors Awards. And that wasn't the big it was, okay, okay, okay. It was the big win for the night. Everyone was expecting that. But also, Ki Hui Kwan, who played her husband in the film, won Outstanding Supporting Male Actor as well. And he's the first Asian male to win in that category. So it was huge for everybody to see him win because it wasn't just the traditional actors that you're expecting to win, that always win every single year. It was someone new, someone fresh who deserved it. And I'm so excited for him because his award speech was something that was inspiring to me me as an artist. He gave up acting for 20 years and then came back because of this film. And this is what happened. It shot him to the spotlight and he won Outstanding Supporting Male Actor. I can't even tell you how, as an artist, that's inspiring to me. It was a sweep for a lot of the categories for this particular film. Brendan Fraser did win for The Whale, which was expected. I personally didn't see the movie, but I've heard it was amazing. <laughs> I don't know, I just couldn't really... I haven't brought myself to the point where I'm ready to be in tears. What do you think about the whale? Did he deserve this award? Mandalorian season three is starting. Are you ready? Cause I'm ready. I've been waiting for this. I've been rewatching. I've been catching up. Well, okay, I've been rewatching most of the things. I uh, rewatched part of Boba Fett. Episodes five, six, and seven, which is the last time that we saw the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, and baby Grogu. I'm ready to see like what they get into. Obviously, we're gonna be moving into Mandalore, getting some fabulous characters, hopefully, hopefully from the Rebel series that is also gonna set up for Ahsoka, the new season, which is supposed to start reportedly in July. It's been well over two years since season two ended, but we've seen Din Djarin and Grogu in the Book of Boba Fett, as I already mentioned, and a lot happened in that three episode arc. Din was told by the armorer that he is a Mandalorian Lorian no more, which I have feelings about that. Now, for those of you who are Star Wars Rebels fans and Star Wars The Clone Wars, I don't know, you probably already knew this, but I figured it out yesterday that he was raised in the old ways, the old ways of Death Watch, which that's something that really came about in Star Wars, The Clone Wars. And in Rebels, we see Bo-Katan. I'm sorry, let me take that back because I don't think we see Bo-Katan in Rebels. <laughs> we definitely see Bo-Katan in <laughs> Star Wars, The Clone Wars. <laughs> Definitely, we see Sabine Wren and Ezra Bridger. I'm hoping they make an appearance in order to set up for Ahsoka season three. That is something that hopefully is going to set up a lot of information for this next season of The Mandalorian. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm all set up in my uh, Mandalorian shirt here. The back of it says, this is the way. So. You're not gonna show us? You wanna see it? Okay. <laughs> okay, all of y'all, you should have Disney Plus. If you don't have Disney Plus, get Disney Plus. There's a lot of things on there, like The Bad Batch, like Star Wars, The Clone Wars, like Rebels, and you know, live action stuff too. Let me just do a quick recap. It's not very quick. Well, okay, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the journeys of the Mandalorian through the Star Wars galaxy continue. Once a lone bounty hunter, Din Djarin was reunited with Grogu. Meanwhile, the New Republic struggles to lead the galaxy away from its dark history. The Mandalorian will cross paths with old allies and make new enemies as he and Grogu continue their journey together. You know, because Grogu has his little shirt now. He made his choice. Just to recap, the last time we saw Grogu, he was with Luke Skywalker, which again, I had some feelings about that because Luke obviously, A, Return of the Jedi, you realize you needed your friend, you couldn't do it by yourself. So why are you giving Grogu this like choice of like, you can't be with him? You literally had Leia, Han, Chewie, and Chewbacca. Uh, sorry, Chewie is Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> you literally had Chewie, C-3PO, and R2-D2. How you gonna tell somebody they can't have friends? Get out of here. But anyways, that's just the last time we saw him. He made his choice. He accepted the shirt that Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, left for him with Ahsoka to give to Luke, hopefully to share with Grogu. And Grogu made his choice, rightfully so. Just like Ezra Bridger had Kanan Jarrus, 
Now he has a Mandalorian. So anyways, that's all I got for you. I hope you have enjoyed this Cinequickies and I will see you next time.